Huh. Well, I, I love so much that you chose to follow what you truly wanted to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty early on. I, and you know what? Actually, that, that did come from my uncle, where he's the guy that introduced me to the comedy records. So that's really got me inspired to like, ah, okay, people do this for money. Huh. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? They, that's that's really interesting. So, so you kind of learned early on that that was something that you wanted to do. Oh yeah, definitely. I I did, I did know that pretty early. I was kind of obsessed with the mechanics of it, of of how somebody makes somebody else laugh. Like I would watch lots of TV shows, read lots of books, and 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 try to do it myself. So. Huh. There was a little bit of self training in that too. You know, you know my son Mike. Mm -hmm. and, and he from the time he was 3 years old and maybe even a little earlier wanted to be a chef and a comedian. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and at one point his dream was to have a cook a funny cooking show. <laughs> And so he used to watch um, uh, Muppet Babies. Oh, yeah. And he would tell Fozzie Bear Waka Waka jokes <laughs> <laughs> all day long. <laughs> and if we didn't laugh, he would think something was wrong. So, and now he's right. doing stand-up at the, uh, at the um, Port Clinton or the Catawba Island Brewery once a month. Oh, yeah, I heard they were doing an open mic night now. That's great. Yes, and he brings in comedians. Maybe he should bring you in sometime. Well, I'd, I'd be happy to, to come in. I don't. I haven't done stand-up in forever, but I could totally, like, maybe do some improv or do some type of so – I could do something. Yes. <laughs> we'll have to talk about that because – I usually go down there the first Thursday of every month, and it would be really fun to see you. And Don and, and Mike usually come. So oh, that would okay. be really fun. So there's a little plug for the Catawba Island Brewery. Yay. <laughs> right. So um, what do you see next for you? Well, I have been writing uh, a lot. I've written a couple plays. And uh, right now I'm just trying to, like, find people to produce them. Because one's, like, really – normally I would just produce it myself, but I wrote a play that's, like, really huge. Like, it's, like oh. the best place where it would be in a school with multiple rooms. And so wow. I'm trying to find a, a theater company to, to uh, connect with and see about getting that play produced. The, the basic concept is that as, as an audience member, you would be a student at this school, and – you would get a schedule, and so you have to go to these five different classrooms, and then there's a big assembly room you go to at the end of it. Um, so that doesn't really tell you the beat of it, but that's, that's, logistically it's a little bit of a challenge, and it's been hard to find a place to uh, coordinate with. How cool that is. So we can consider you a playwright now, huh? Oh, yeah, I think that's fair. Cool. And what's the other one? Oh, one one I wrote a few years ago um, about the you know kind of a small five person guy having a midlife crisis kind of thing, uh, and then one that I'm working on now is a film noir goof. It's just a silly play <laughs> about you know after a heist and the fallout with this small group of people. <laughs> Very cool. That sounds like so much fun. Well, it's so nice to talk to somebody that is actually living their dream. You really uh, are. Thanks. Yeah. And so how do you think that that makes you different? Oh, I don't, I, I, I mean, I guess I don't really think in that term. I think anybody could do what I'm doing or anybody can just, you know, nurture their creative side. I don't, I don't feel like I'm too different from other people. That's the exact answer I was hoping for because you you know you knew what you wanted to do and you just did it. Yeah. So and yeah, you, I mean I, I mean uh, it's not exactly the way I thought it would turn out, 
but I, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. I feel like I'm serving a purpose and I'm still being creative. Excellent. Very good. So if you, if you were to talk to your, let's say, 15-year-old self, what would you say to him? Uh, use more dial soap to get rid of the acne. <laughs> uh, go to college right after high school. <laughs> I took a year off. Uh, and, and then and get to work right after you get out of college. Go right to work doing what you want to do. That's the important part, doing what you want to do, isn't it? Yeah. Don't wait for the phone to ring. Get to work. I love that. That's very good. What would you say to your 21-year-old self? That's <laughs> pretty much the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> what about your 25-year-old self? Oh, you know what? When I was 25 is when I uh, I stopped bar backing at, a, uh, at this bar at a hotel and started doing stand-up. Ah. So, so I, I got through to my 25-year-old. <laughs> Good. You know, and that's usually Stop. the age. 25 in boys is or men is usually the age where all of a sudden it hits you. <laughs> yeah, it was just very clear that I was not on the track I wanted to be, and, and I needed to take action. And you did, and look at you now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. So uh, would, would, do you have any performances going on right now anywhere, or...? Uh, I don't. Summer, it's really kind of just focusing on uh, teaching and workshops and writing. And then uh, hopefully get one of these plays into production. And then I'll let you know if I have some performances. Yes, good. Please do. So what's the most important thing in your life right now? Huh. You know, uh, reading the news can be very disheartening. Uh I think that's disheartening regardless what party you affiliate with. And uh, for me, uh, what's important is to find ways to remain hopeful. You know, keep looking for the good. Because it's really easy to go down some dark holes on the Internet and reading news. It is. Yes, you're right. So how do you stay hopeful? Well, a lot of it is friends. You know, making sure you, you're connected with people that make you laugh um also challenge you but but in a good way a growthful way very good and i, I watch a lot of cat i watch a lot of cat videos <laughs> <laughs> the cat news <laughs> yeah <laughs> cat news all the time so um <laughs> if if you were to change one thing about the world right now, what would it be? Oh, gosh. You know, I, I, I would change. I, w I would make travel dirt cheap and get people visiting other cultures and other countries and, and, and making connections and just realizing that there's a whole world out there there's no just my neighborhood my block my house it's like we all belong to the planet earth and i think i think in some ways we're we're almost obliged to like get out of the country and go visit other places go meet other people there's something about when you do that you i think it shifts the way you think about the planet and i would love to see more people traveling and and meeting people. Mm, that was a really good answer. I love that. So if you were to tweak your life, just a slight little tweak to improve it, what would it be? Uh, well, more travel. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely do that. I've been able to increase it over the last few years, but I definitely want to do more traveling. And traveling that's, you know, for leisure, but also I think I screwed up the word leisure, leisure, for leisure, uh, traveling just for fun, but also I would love to teach workshops around the world, meet people and do creative projects. I think that would, that would be really exciting for me. Hmm. Are you taking any steps in that direction? Yes. I was in Scotland last March and I connected with some folks and I, I pitched them some workshops 
And uh, so we're going back and forth, seeing if we can work something out. And then, uh, and and I'm also just trying to see like where where else can I get my 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 face into? Which uh, right now I'm looking at Ireland as a possibility. And uh, uh, yeah, any I'm open to anything right now. <laughs> I love that you reach out and try to make something happen. That's important. So oh yeah, if you. I think definitely. If you were talking to somebody that maybe wanted to do something, maybe wanted to be a play playwright or teach comedy or teach improv, what would you? What advice would you give to them? Well, I mean, I do run into that uh, a lot with people who are interested in teaching, and I think that if you really are interested in teaching, you've got to get out there and teach. Um, but I don't think you should just, hey, here's my workshop. I'm going to charge you a hundred bucks, and you've never taught before. I think you could open up a free drop-in workshop, do it at a library or a, a YMCA or some park, and and get get your chops, get your experience teaching, and then as you start feeling like you you're getting a handle on it, then I think it's okay to start charging people money. Right. Uh, that's that's really good advice. So. Open mic at the Catawba Island Club. I keep threatening my son that I want that I, one of these days I'm going to do it because you know. Oh, you I, should. I think I'm funny, so. <laughs> you are funny. <laughs> well, thank you. So, what advice would you give me? Uh, here's the the main thing I would tell you is carry a notebook. I mean, some people will take make notes on their phone. I don't think that's the same thing. I would carry like a small notebook with a pen. And anytime, anytime I had a funny idea, I would just jot it down. Ah. Or, or sometimes it's just walking along and you see something funny. Or sometimes you're walking along and you, you just have a funny thought. You know, and I think that happens to people all the time. And, 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 lot, and what, what I also noticed from doing that is that there are thoughts I had all the time, but I never thought to write it down. Ah. And then I would write it down and, and be able to develop it into something I could use. Do you, so, do you so think a lot, you have to have a good a part of it is learning to listen to yourself. Ah, so if you think something is funny, then other people might too. It's quite likely. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I'm. I'm. One of these nights, I'm going to do it. All right. My, Great. I want to hear all about okay, it. Okay. Good. And my son told me to get a routine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you only need a few minutes at first, right? You only need like three or four minutes. Oh, right. Because when I give speeches, like I can give an a hour and a half speech, a 90-minute speech, and for part of the time I purposely have people laughing, and then at the end I get very poignant about what that speech was all about. Is that considered comedy? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think uh, the, the thing about stand-up is that you – you, you've made this contract with the audience that you're there to make them laugh. And so you, you are under some obligation to make them laugh consistently over the time you're there. And and uh, I think it's okay to, for a little poignancy, but I think you still have to follow that up with a big laugh. Ah, follow it up with a big laugh. Yeah. So it would be like 95% like going for laughs, 5% poignancy. So the opposite of what I usually go for. <laughs> right. <laughs> Excellent. That's really good advice. Thank you. Is there something that oh. you have held inside that you want to talk about? Huh. Hmm. Not, not, not in line with what we've been talking about so far. <laughs> <laughs> Just anything. Uh, well, there's there's stuff in the news that makes me angry. It's mostly about stuff that makes me ang makes me angry. Um, I, I I'm worried about the economy because I think I think a lot of people have jobs with their part time jobs, and like you know I can speak for that myself. Like I have three part time jobs, right? And and I really can't do without any one of them to make the money that I want to make. So, and so I think that's a little dangerous thing in the country. Like, people don't want to pay benefits, so instead of hiring full-time people, they hire part-time people. 
And so I think there's a lot of people working two, three jobs like I am, and, and they're working 